and welcome back to Interpreting the Stars, where today we're talking about the classic 1982 Steven Spielberg film, E.T., The Extraterrestrial. Now, if you've had a good childhood, you've probably seen this movie. If you haven't, then you're missing out. Even if it's a movie that you don't like, which granted seems like a slim chance, most people do like it. But if you don't, there's just so much to appreciate and respect with this film because it definitely earned its place in the history of film. So let's talk about this movie with an extra mundane character, and let's get cracking. This review is brought to you by the word of the day, extra mundane, outside or beyond the physical world. Like when I think outside the box, I go so far outside the box that I'm extra mundane. E.T. the extraterrestrial follows around Elliot, a boy who has just discovered an alien hiding out in his tool shed. He soon learns that his incredible, smart alien wishes to create a beacon to call out to his home planet to return for him. So he vows to help the E.T. while avoiding getting caught by the military who is hot on their trail. So, first of all, one of the best things about this movie is probably the fact that Spielberg directed it, who is very, very good at weaving together different genres to create something magical. Because I just saw Close Encounters of the Third Kind before this, and I can really tell the similar styles of filmmaking. They both feel magical in their own way, but this is probably the more known film for a couple of reasons. One, because it's slightly more modern. Two, and this is a big one, the characters are much more likable and relatable because you got kids, which brings a lot of innocence and heart to most films, especially Spielberg films. And you got E.T. himself, who looks unlike any alien we've ever seen before or since in film. Other than that, both films thematically do the same thing. They weave together themes of comedy to intrigue, to thriller, to elements of horror and even depression and loneliness back to light aspects like hope and love and family for something that does feel very powerfully magic. Spielberg did that in Close Encounters, and he did it even more effectively in E.T. Past that, you're going to realize that this film has some incredibly memorable uses of cinematography, and I'm not kidding. Every single scene in this movie is shot in a way that you could remember forever. I could literally pause the film at any given moment, rearrange all the screenshots, and not only would the pictures look really nice from a cinematic viewpoint, but it'd also be able to tell you exactly what's going on in the movie. And I can almost, almost do the same thing listening to the original score by John Williams, which gets my nostalgic goosebumps going every time that I hear them. And it's strange because it feels like it's my favorite film. It feels like I've seen it hundreds of times, but in reality, I, I haven't seen it in decades. It's just that memorable. Nothing in my rating model got a bad score. Some things in the people category weren't perfect, but it was darn near. I literally can't think of anything in this film that was a misstep. That's why my unbiased score reflects that at 92%. And because I love this film, my bias score is a lot higher at 98%, which averages everything out to a final score of 95%, 95 out of 100 possible stars, granting E.T. the extraterrestrial with a letter grade of A. Even though certain aspects of this movie are a little aged, it's not by much. What's technically aged now stands the test of time by being nostalgic because you wouldn't have it any other way. Take that as you will. Tell me your thoughts on this film in the comments down below. Is this your favorite Spielberg film? There's a lot of them out there. So tell me what your thoughts are. As for YouTube, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button if you like this review because there's more like it coming out. Hit the thumbs up button because that always helps out my channel. And don't forget about the little bell icon because that'll help notify you when I come out with my next review. And until then, peace out.